Hello and welcome to Indus News live from Islamabad. I am Muneeb Hamid with the news of this hour. Let's begin with the top stories first. The United Nation has warned that the freezing of billions of dollars in Afghan assets will inevitably spark a severe downturn. UN Special Envoy Deborah Leon stressed the need to find a way to get money flowing to Afghanistan to prevent a total breakdown. He said allowing the economy to breathe for a few months will give the Taliban a chance to demonstrate flexibility. The presidents of the United States and China have discussed the need to ensure that com competition between the two powers does not become a conflict. President Joe Biden and his Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping held their first call in seven months. The White House says the two sides had a broad strategic discussion including where their interests converge. While Beijing says President Xi Jinping told Biden that the US policy on China imposes great difficulties on bilateral relations. Russia has warned the United States against deploying weapons to space, saying it will have to bear the consequences. Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Ryabkov accused Washington and its allies of undermining global security. In an interview, he noted Russia and China have been calling for using political and diplomatic means to prevent an arms race in space. Brazil has registered 753 daily deaths from COVID-19 and nearly 31,000 new cases. In Pakistan, the virus has claimed 83 more lives and infected close to 3,700 people overnight. Globally, the coronavirus death toll has exceeded 4.6 million, while the caseload is over 223 million. And in football, Argentina's Leone Messi has broken Brazilian legend Pele's record to become South America's top international scorer. Pele had 77 goals in international play, while Messi scored his 79th in Argentina's 3-0 win over Bolivia in a World Cup qualifying match. And these were the top stories. News in detail after a short break. Stay with us. Let's take you live to Islamabad, where the Foreign Minister of Spain, Jose Manuel, is arriving at the Foreign Office. And you can see live visuals of his arrival at the Foreign uh, Ministry in Islamabad. He is expected to hold talks with Foreign Minister Shami Mut Qureshi to discuss the latest developments in Afghanistan and also bilateral relations will also be part of discussions during the uh, delegation level talks. And also Pakistan and Spain uh, enjoy Qadail relations bilaterally as well as in the context of the European Union and uh, multilateral fora. Spain is also the third largest trading partner of Pakistan within the European Union. And uh, as you can see live on your screens right now, the Foreign Minister of Spain, Jess Manuel, And right now he is planting a sapling alongside the foreign minister. And we shall keep you updated with this. And uh, right now we shall go on to our news stories and we shall keep you updated with the latest on the Spain's foreign minister whenever he is to hold a press conference alongside Pakistan's foreign minister. Now moving on to our regular news stories. The UN has warned that the freezing of billions of dollars in Afghan assets will inevitably spark a severe downturn. United Nations Special Envoy Deborah Lloyds stressed the need to find a way to get money flowing to Afghanistan to prevent a total breakdown. This report has details. The United Nations Security Council met to discuss the economic situation in Afghanistan. The UN Envoy in Afghanistan, Lloyds, argued allowing the economy to breathe for a few months will give the Taliban a chance to demonstrate flexibility. The US senior diplomat Jeffrey De Laurentiis said the Taliban seek international help, but Washington's stance is clear that any legitimacy will have to be earned. While China said these assets belong to Afghanistan and should not be used as leverage for threats or restraints. 
Beijing's deputy UN ambassador Zheng Shu Wang also chided what he called failed foreign model in Afghanistan. What relevant countries have done in Afghanistan in the past 20 years has ended in failure. They should seriously reflect on it and correct mistakes in a timely manner, rather than walking away from the problems of their own doing and leaving them to Afghanistan and other countries in the region. Much of the Afghan Central Bank's $10 billion in assets are parked overseas. The U.S. Treasury Department says it is not easing Taliban sanctions or loosening curbs on the group's access to global financial system. The International Monetary Fund also blocked the Taliban from accessing some $440 million in new emergency reserves. Now, the BRICS members have urged the need to prevent Afghanistan from being used as a staging ground for terrorism. Leaders of Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa virtually met at the 13th summit. They emphasized fostering an inclusive intra-Afghan dialogue to ensure peace, stability and order in the country. Meanwhile, Chinese President Xi Jinping called on the BRICS countries to embrace changes of the current times. He also stressed keeping abreast of the times in advancing cooperation. While Russian President Vladimir Putin said the authority of the bloc is growing and its role in international affairs is increasing. In Afghanistan, Putin said it is still not entirely clear how all the situation will affect the regional and global security. Now, the presidents of U.S. and China have discussed the need to ensure that competition between the two powers does not become a conflict. President Joe Biden and his Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping held their first call in seven months. The White House says the two sides had a broad strategic discussion, including where their interests converge. In a statement, it said Biden underscored U.S.'s interest in peace, instability, stability, I beg your pardon, and prosperity in the Indo-Pacific and the world. While Beijing said President Xi Jinping told Biden that U.S. policy on China imposes great difficulties on bilateral relations. Chinese state media said both sides agree to maintain frequent contact and to ask working level teams to increase communications. It quoted Xi Jinping as saying that China and the U.S. should push ties back to the right track of stable development as soon as possible. Now, Russia has warned the United States against deploying weapons to space, saying it will have to bear the consequences. Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Ryabkov accused Washington and its allies of undermining global security. He said such political attempts are aimed at restricting Russia's influence on international stage. In an interview, he said Russia has pledged that it will not be the first to deploy weapons to space. He noted Russia and China have been calling for using political and diplomatic means to prevent an arms race in space. Also, Russia and Belarus have agreed on tighter coordination in economic policy. President Vladimir Putin says an economic foundation must be laid before furthering the political track. Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko met with Putin in Moscow. Russian President pledged to lend around $640 million to Minsk by the end of 2022. Putin also announced bilateral agreements on macroeconomic policies and common tax and customs measures. Meanwhile, Lukashenko said that if necessary, both countries may also integrate in military and political dimensions. The two also agreed to incorporate their energy markets as Moscow maintains steeply discounted supplies of natural gas to Minsk. They also agreed to set up a unified gas and oil market. The United States and Mexico have resumed high-level economic talks for the first time in four years. Vice President Kamala Harris and Secretary of State Antony Blinken led the U.S. delegation in Washington. The two sides seek to find common ground on a host of issues including climate change, workers' rights and immigration. The dialogue will seek to pursue economic opportunities beyond the issues covered in the 2020 North America Trade Agreement. The Trump administration had abandoned the talks after accusing Mexico of sending criminal migrants to the United States. Now, the Organization of Islamic Cooperation has condemned the ongoing crackdown against Palestinian prisoners in Israeli jails. In a statement, it also reaffirmed its support for Palestinians' right to freedom and dignity. 
This comes as massive rallies have taken place across the occupied West Bank against the inhumane treatment of Palestinian inmates. The occupation authorities have cancelled family visits for Palestinian inmates following the escape of six prisoners from the Jilboa prison. Now, in India, a viral fever outbreak has infected thousands and left more than 100 people dead in the country. After Uttar Pradesh, the state of Bihar is also experiencing an unprecedented rise in cases among children. A medic said all the beds in the pediatric wards of a hospital in the city of Darbhanga are full. The official said over two to three children are undergoing treatment on bed. Officials noted over 150 patients are being admitted in the district hospital every day, out of which 15 are serious. According to media reports, intensive care units as well as general wards are completely full. Moving on, Brazil has registered 753 daily deaths from COVID-19 and nearly 31,000 new cases. Globally, the coronavirus death toll has exceeded 4.6 million, while the case load is over 223 million. More details about the pandemic in this report. As the vaccine is the key factor in the fight against coronavirus, its requirement and controversies around it are getting to grow. In the U.S., Los Angeles County school officials have ordered vaccinations for all students aged 12 and over. It has become the largest school district in the U.S. to take that dramatic step. President Joe Biden has announced sweeping new vaccine requirements, affecting as many as 100 million Americans in an all-out effort to curb the surging Delta variant. He is mandating all federal employees to get the jabs. Despite the fact that for almost five months, free vaccines have been available in 80,000 different locations, we still have nearly 80 million Americans who have failed to get the shot. And to make matters worse, there are elected officials actively working to undermine the fight against COVID-19. In Europe, Italy's medicines agency has approved the use of a third dose of vaccines for the vulnerable groups of the population. While the government rule catering and cleaning staff in schools and nursing homes can only work if they have proof of COVID-19 immunity. Britain's medical regulator has also given the go-ahead for Pfizer and AstraZeneca's vaccine to be used as booster shots. Meanwhile, in Africa, top health officials of the AU said rich nations would do better to send vaccines to Africa rather than hoarding them for booster shots that scientific evidence has yet to conclusively back. We are not, as a continent, uh, very keen in any uh, definition of vaccine diplomacy that would mean that people make statements <clears throat> statements in the media that are not really back with reality. Pledges do not put vaccines into people's arms. I think we, we want real vaccines and not just pledge vaccines. Australia's COVID-19 daily cases have topped 1,900 for the first time. An outbreak fueled by the highly infectious Delta variant continues to gain ground in lockdown Sydney and Melbourne. Meanwhile, coronavirus has claimed 83 more lives in Pakistan over the past 24 hours. The health ministry says the death toll has reached 26,580. It said more than 3,600 people contracted the virus overnight. The country's caseload has exceeded 1.19 million, while over a million and 79,000 people have recovered. There are more than 91,000 active cases in the country, of which nearly 500 and 4,000 are critical. The ministry says over 20 million people in Pakistan have been fully vaccinated. Now, Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan has stressed the need for enhanced measures to battle extremism. He was chairing a high-level national security meeting in Islamabad, which was attended by senior civil and military officials. The meeting discussed the latest situation in Afghanistan and its implications for the country. The forum was also briefed on domestic security issues as well as progress on the 15-point National Action Plan. More news coming up after a short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Now a team of South Korean researchers has created a skin with a special ink that changes color based on temperature. Let's find out more in this report. 
Ko Sung Hyun, a mechanical engineer professor at Seoul National University, leads a team of researchers that develop the color changing skin, the artificial camouflage technology that mimics the color changing ability of a chameleon is controlled by tiny flexible heaters. Information about color is sent to a microprocessor. The microprocessor has information about required temperatures needed to make certain colors. So it gives orders to heaters to make certain temperatures and create a certain shade based on that. Sung Hyun says he took inspiration from the color changing mechanism of chameleons to create a variable device capable of changing its color. The total thickness of the flexible multi layered artificial skin is less than 100 micrometers, thinner than a human hair. By adding additional silver nano wire, layers and simple shapes such as dot lines or squares, the skin can create complex patterns. <laughs> It consists of thermochromic liquid crystal layers that can change color by temperature and then a layer of silver nanowire heaters underneath that can adjust temperature. The two layers are placed on a plastic substrate. The total thickness of those three layers is only dozens of micrometers, so it can be bent easily. Sung Hyun envisions his research can be adapted for military uniforms to help soldiers blend into their surroundings. It can also be used for aesthetic purposes such as for fashion, exteriors of cars and buildings, as well as for future display technology. Nine football, Argentina's Leone Messi has broken Brazilian legend Pele's record to become South America's top international scorer. Pele had 77 career goals in international play, while Messi scored his 79th in Argentina's 3-0 win over Bolivia in a World Cup qualifying match. Messi got the opener after 14 minutes in Buenos Aires before making it 2-0 in the 64th minute. He then completed the hat-trick with two minutes left, crashing home a rebound from close range. Messi has been Argentina's most prolific scorer since 2016 when he surpassed Gabriel Bautista's 54 goals. He helped lead his country to the Copa America title this summer, his first piece of major senior international silver pair with his country. And in tennis, British teen Emma Rajakanu has made history by becoming the first qualified to reach a Grand Slam final. The 18-year-old battled past Greece's Maria Sakkari 6-1 and 6-4 in the U.S. Open semi-final. Rudy Kanu fended off seven breakpoints across her first two service games on the way to a 5-0 lead in the first set. She went on to seal the match in the second set and set up a final against 19-year-old Canadian Leila Fernandez. The Brighton has not dropped a set yet after nine matches at the tournament. Earlier, Fernandez also stormed to the final, shocking second seed Arena Sabalenka by 7-6, 4-6 and 6-4 in a thriller. And now let's find out the latest weather situation around the world with Raja Sarosh. Thank you. Welcome to the weather forecast. We're going to start with Abu Dhabi where weather is expected to be sunny with temperatures rising to 39 degrees centigrade. While in Amsterdam, rainy weather is expected with temperatures steady at 23 degrees centigrade. If we head to Ankara, there is partly sunny weather with temperatures at 27 degrees centigrade. Moving down under to Auckland, the temperature is chilly at 17 degrees centigrade with rain in forecast. Now if you're traveling to Bangkok, there will be an expected thunderstorm with temperatures around 31 degrees centigrade. In Beijing temperatures are 28 degrees centigrade accompanied with a partly sunny sky, while Beirut will also experience partly sunny weather with temperatures at 31 degrees centigrade. Meanwhile, burners will experience temperatures at 26 degrees centigrade accompanied with rain. Heading to Cairo, the sun will be out with temperatures at 33 degrees centigrade. Moving down under in Canberra, the temperatures are 20 degrees centigrade with partly cloudy sky. In Islamabad, the temperatures are at 29 degrees centigrade with layers of clouds floating in the sky. While in Jakarta, the temperatures are steady at 33 degrees centigrade with cloudy, cloudy sky. That's all for now. Back to you. Thanks, Arush, for the weather updates. And with that, we come to the end of this news bulletin. For the latest updates, you can follow us on social media at Indus.news.